Good morning, friends. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me on this first Thursday in April 2024. We're getting ready for a tremendous signal from the heavens. It happens next Monday. It's a total solar eclipse. It's going to cross the United States. There are some things to know about that. But in honor of that event, we are going through the book of Jonah. So grab a good cup of coffee. Join me in Jonah chapter one. We just started it yesterday. If you're a day behind, go back and catch that video. And we're going to march right through this beautiful Old Testament book. Now, in the meantime, I want to, of course, shout out to some special folks, Sherry. It was great to spend some time with you yesterday. And we just appreciate all that you're doing. We're just praying for that next door that God opens for you as you kind of back away from a particular business opportunity in the Green Creek area of Polk County and uh, see what God wants to do with you guys next. So we're looking forward to that step. And then Stu and Christy Damron, how are you guys doing? Christy, I got the note from you yesterday and it was so good to hear from you guys. Talk about uh, going way back, all the way back to Valdosta at Perimeter Road Baptist Church and some of the great times we had together in ministry. And uh, some of the things you guys did with our uh, our two girls, you know, as far as ministry is concerned, when you were leading our youth ministry, taking them to places like Jamaica and Washington, D.C. for the great stakeout, just fantastic stuff going on during those times. So good to hear from you yesterday as well. Well, listen, we're in Jonah chapter number one, and we yesterday read about Jonah's run. He has taken off. And uh, we've got this wonderful church that the eclipse is going to pass close to in Ohio called Jonah's Run Baptist Church. We have a little bitty community of about 60 people in Texas called Jonah, of all things. The eclipse is going over, so hey, we'll hit some of those implications later. But where did we leave Jonah yesterday? Jonah was on the run. We left him in verse 3, having decided he's going to go get a ticket. Uh, he's got a ticket to ride, riding all the way to Tarshish, he thinks, until we get to verse number 4, when something happens. Now, I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible, and I'll be quoting from time to time from Dr. C.E. Autry, a late professor at the Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, who wrote a tremendous book about revivals in the Old Testament, back around 1960, and in it he deals with Jonah and this situation, but he was, of course, using only the translations he had at the time, like the King James Version and uh, perhaps American Standard, and he makes note of something that is interesting about this particular verse, verse 4, and when he quotes it, he says literally what this means from the Hebrew is, and then he quotes literally almost comes up with the Christian standard version of verse number four. Here's what it says. But the Lord threw a great wind onto the sea, and such a great storm came, arose on the sea that the ship threatened to break apart. So this is what happens to the ship that is transporting Jonah, the rebellious prophet, away from his job to go preach to Nineveh. With that kind of uh, impression, you know, some versions don't make it quite that strong, but that's exactly the way it reads in the Hebrew. It's like the Lord threw a great wind onto the sea. Now, if you have to ask yourself, why is it that the sailors realized that this was something out of the ordinary? Listen, sailors in those days were not ignorant fools. They knew how to watch signs and signals from the wind and the sky, and when it would be fair weather to sail, they sometimes were surprised, but if there was a storm coming up, you could see it coming from a distance. There was something different about this one, and what they thought was going to be very fair weather for sailing, all of a sudden something takes place that was out of the ordinary. That's why we have recorded here that the Lord threw a great wind onto the sea. Well, the sailors in verse 5, it says, reacted with fear. Yeah, it says they were afraid and each cried out to his God. So we have apparently a kind of a multicultural crew here who knows what backgrounds were represented, what countries were represented from these folks who sailed on the sea in Jonah's day. They were all busy calling out to their gods, trying to get some relief. 
And well, it says they threw the ship's cargo into the sea to lighten the load. And meanwhile, Jonah had gone down to the lowest part of the vessel and had stretched out and fallen into a deep sleep. <laughs> Some have said that a guilty conscience is something that makes you go to sleep because you don't want to be awake thinking about your circumstances. So you often seek that, that relief from your guilt in sleep. Well, Dr. Autry said that, you know, one of the folks that sleeps the best is a backslidden Christian, no concern for others and no concern for their own spiritual condition. They can get away from it and seem so complacent <laughs> and just not worry about it. They sleep pretty good. Well, sleep was something that had come upon Jonah, perhaps because of relief. You know, perhaps he was thinking, oh, I got my ticket. I'm on board now. Whoo! We're on our way getting away from God's call to go preach to those Ninevites that I don't like. I hope he destroys them soon because I don't like them. And so Jonah is in this particular state, all of a sudden feeling the relief of the escape. I have gotten away from God. Friends, you don't ever get away from God, my friends. Try that sometime doesn't matter if you go to Antarctica or Mars. God is wherever you go. And so Jonah discovered that the hard way. It says that here he is sound asleep when in verse 6, the captain approached him and said, what are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call to your God, and maybe this God will consider us and we won't perish. And verse 7 says, come on, the sailors said to each other, let's cast lots. And we'll know who is to blame for this trouble that we're in. So they cast lots, and the lot singled out Jonah. Now, some of you might be asking, you think God really works in people's gambling habits and what they're doing there? Does he make the numbers fall the right way for certain people? Well, obviously, God's in control of everything. Whenever he wants to be, he can turn the tide whichever way he wants to turn it. And he wanted to make sure that these guys knew because they were suspicious. This storm came out of nowhere. It came suddenly. It won't abate. And they believe with all their hearts, even out of their own paganism, that God's after somebody. And thus, the reputation that comes even down to our age, when you think someone is messing up things in your company, in your family, or what on your trip, whatever, somebody says, who's the Jonah? Who's the Jonah? Well, because here's the one bringing all the bad luck to the ship at this time. So the lot fell on Jonah. In verse 8, they turned to him with complete certainty, and they said, tell us who's to blame for this trouble we're in. What's your business? Where are you from? What's your country? Uh, and what people are you from? Well, then here comes the big news. Verse 9, he answered them, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of the heavens, who made the sea and the dry land. Well, in verse 10, then the men were seized by a great fear. You know, the fear seemed to escalate when they heard the reputation of Jonah. They had obviously heard of the God of Hebrews, the Hebrews, his great works through the ages, his parting of the sea, his going before his people with fire, the story of David and Goliath. Some of those were probably known in all of those pagan surrounding countries from which these people would have come that are today just the crew of a sailing ship. So it said they were seized by a great fear, a, more, a, a bigger fear than they initially had when the storm came up. So the question comes, what have you done? The men knew he was fleeing from the Lord's presence because he had told them. And so they said to him, what should we do to you so that the sea will calm down for us? For the sea was getting worse and worse. Well, he answered them, well, pick me up and throw me into the sea so that it will calm down for you. For I know that I'm to blame for this great storm that is against you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they couldn't because the sea was raging against them more and more. So they called out to the Lord, Please, Lord, don't let us perish because of this man's life, and don't charge us with innocent blood, for you, Lord, have done just as you pleased. And then they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. 
the men were seized by great fear of the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Isn't it amazing, Dr. Autry points this out, that the first revival that takes place wasn't in Nineveh. The first revival took place on this ship from a group of pagan sailors who realized that God was in the storm. Folks got a lot of storms coming these days. Will you be able to see God in the storm? Hmm. We'll pick up right there tomorrow as we continue this beautiful story of the prophet Jonah, the revival at Nineveh, and the eclipse that's coming over the United States. Hey, God bless you. We'll see you then as we wake up in God's Word.